Welcome to our webinar, Improve Account Holder Experience with Proven Data Management Strategies. We're so glad you could join us to hear some of the ways that leveraging automation to enhance data management can build better experiences for your members and customers. My name is Michaela Marley. I'm a Content Marketing Manager at SMA Technologies, and I'm excited to introduce you to today's presenters. Gabby Saliba is a Customer Success Manager at SMA Technologies and Andrea Downing is our Community Engagement Manager. I will let them take it away. Thanks, Michaela. Um, before we get started, I just wanted Gabby to go ahead and introduce himself. Some of you may know him, but uh, go ahead, Gabby, and let us know how long you've been at SMA and what you've done before that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, my name is Gabby Saliba. I'm a customer success manager with SMA, been in a customer success role for about two and a half years now, coming on uh, coming on three years, been with SMA for about a little over six years. I uh, actually, in my previous role at SMA, I was a consultant. I did a lot of the technical work, did a lot of implementations. And overall, uh, I've been an OpCon uh, my entire career for about 13 years now, uh, came from a credit union. I did work at a credit union for a little over eight years as well, moved over to SMA, did some consulting, and now I'm over in customer success. So. Um, just just a little bit about a little bit of background uh, about me. Went through a went through a core conversion with a credit union. Did the whole thing from help desk to IT manager, and uh, just gathered a lot of experience during that. So I'm happy to share that with you guys here today. Yep, and that's why we brought you on board. Got a lot Thank of experience, and a lot of knowledge. So appreciate that. Absolutely. And just before we get started, we just want to remind you of our purpose to secure better business outcomes for you all. And we do that through comprehensive end-to-end -end automation. So SMA has been around about 40 years and we continue to uh, not only champion our flagship product of OpCon, but we're also branching out into other services and applications to help you. Again, end-to-end -end automation. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the webinar to improve account holder experience with proven data management strategies, as Michael mentioned. So today's webinar will consist of looking at how to improve account holder experience and data management as strategic imperatives and the role that automation plays in, in making sure we um, meet those account holder needs using that data management. And then, of course, we have Q&A, but... As with all our webinars, if you would like to ask a question anytime during this, this webinar, you can use the Q&A box, which is down at the bottom bar of your Zoom session. So please feel free to drop something in there along the way. We've got, again, Gabby here with his experience to take care of any of those questions that come in. So let's go ahead and get started with top strategic priorities member customer experience and data there. So using some information we pulled from a Jack Henry study and was published in an ebook, um, we're looking at experience related priorities and initiatives. And from that study, member and customer experience drives top priorities. And that's not just a short term, but that's also a long term goal. And so 30% of banks and credit unions that Jack Henry surveyed say improving account holder experience is a top priority. And along with that, um, when we take a closer look at other FI strategic priorities, it's clear that they're not completely set apart from account holder experience, which is um, we want to grow deposits, increase operational efficiency, grow loans, boost account holder acquisition, add digital products or services. So with that, I'll have, um, as throughout this entire session, we'll have kind of Gabby chime in about things here that he's experienced and talked to with customers. And improving that experience, there are some key bullet points here. So Gabby, I just wanted you to kind of talk about these different kinds of things and how they can um, help with that related experience for customers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, when we say increase operational efficiency, you know, that that's not always directly apparent to the member to, you know, but but that's kind of what what drives a, a business to a credit union based on what you offer them on the back end, right? So think of you know increasing operational efficiencies such as uh, uh ACH right a lot of uh, a lot of credit unions you know throughout the years what would happen is let's say with ACH they want to process ACH they come in you know somebody comes in at 6:30 in the morning and downloads the ACH file 
processes the ACH file, runs through exceptions, does all that. Well, Opcon can handle that for you at 4 a.m. or at 3.30 a.m. Once that comes in, it posts it automatically for you. So that way your members are not waiting until 7, 8, 9, 9 a.m. until your their payroll gets posted or until whatever you know checks they send out get posted. So that's kind of where, where, where Opcon uh, uh, excels uh, with increasing operational efficiencies. Now, as far as growing loans, um, more and more every day, uh, you know, when, when I worked in consulting, you know, it was always, hey, how can we connect to this system? How can we connect to this system? Nowadays, everything has an API connection. So when you're thinking about growing loans, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about faster approvals. You're thinking about faster funding, um, you know, and then the, the most important thing is staying one step ahead of fraud. So, you know, things such as, you know, automating OFAC, automating FIDM, all of that can now can now be handled with Opcon. So uh, when I when I worked with a credit union, one of their one of their pain points uh, as, as a consultant, one of their pain points was every time we have a loan application, it's having to be reviewed by somebody. It's taken us two and a half, three days to fund these loans. Our competitor down the street is doing it in 24 hours. They're funding the loans. Opcon was actually able to, you know, speed up that process. And you know, ones that need the loans that needed eyes on them, they they got eyes on them. But a lot of the loans that didn't need eyes on them, they just went through right through an API connection and were funded same day, if if not if not quicker. So uh, th th those are really uh, the fundamental things that will draw these clients to you uh, inst instead of your competitor is just the, thing, the, uh, the efficiencies that you can do on the back end that, like I said, are not always transparent to the end member, but they're going to end up reaping the benefits of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll kind of touch on that as, as we go through being competitive and how we can do that with, with automation. So moving into uh, data related priorities and initiatives from that same Jack Henry study, 20% um, of FI say leveraging data is key in a strategic priority set and also data analytics is one of their top tech investment priorities. And those are pretty much the short term they found. Those are things that they want to do within the next couple of years. Like member and customer experience, data is also going to play a role, right? So as you mentioned, many institutions are looking for investing in fraud detection and mitigation. So that's huge, of course, in this industry. Mm -hmm. uh, as people, you know, kind of roll away from the brick and mortar places, you know, there's more and more digital banking. So that's becoming a, a priority as well. And then 24% and payments as, as another priority there. So again, these um, these three different things, optimizing your data strategy, you go ahead and kind of touch on this as well. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and more and more things now are kind of moving up to the cloud. So you want a data analytics uh, um, platform, that's up in the cloud. Guess what, that has its own database. You want, you know, a, a data aggregation, you want data movement, all of, all of those, Items are great, you know, uh, uh, by themselves. However, the leverage that Opcon gives you over that stuff is you can kind of bring it all under one pane of glass. So, you know, uh, let's say you're, you know, you're using SQL, but you're also using uh, Crystal Reports, you're using business objects, uh, you know, from from SAP, and all of those are data points for you. Now, all of those are great by themselves, but Opcon allows you to kind of have a single pane of glass where you can pull whatever relevant data you want from all of these applications, bring them into one database if you wanted to, bring them into one report. Uh, uh, you know, and and have them have them be presentable. Now, one thing uh, that we did recently with actually one of one of the one of our larger clients was uh, moving data from uh, their SQL. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if anybody on the call leverages Snowflake or Tableau uh, for for reporting, but we were able to kind of to automate that entire process. So picking up data from different data points, from different uh, uh, databases, bringing it all in to one BI or one one reporting uh, structure. And, you know, it, it, it took a little bit of doing it, you know, it was it was a bit of an, an effort to kind of orchestrate all that. But, you know, 30 hours later, we, we gave them a fully working product and they're they're very happy with it. And it was something that, you know, they thought that they would forever have to kind of do by looking at different different dashboards but now they have they have it all under one so that's that's the leverage that opcon will be able to give you uh, um with data migration and data movement and data visibility yeah and it sounds like institutions that are really depending on that data 
we're making oh, key yeah. decisions, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if your decisions are not data driven today, you're going to fall behind pretty quickly. Right. So we've got a, a question for you all, and we want you to share with us um, what priorities rank highest for your organization. So we kind of mentioned a few things like improving that account holder experience, um, maybe boosting account holder acquisition, digital products, leveraging data, fraud detection. So if you'll just take a moment, we'll keep this poll open just for a little bit so that uh, you all can kind of chime in to what seems to be important to you all as far as your organization specifically. We got, looks like boosting account holder acquisition is there on the board and taking over now is enhancing operational efficiency. That's kind of key. And it looks like across the board, there's there's pretty much everybody wants to do all things, right? So it looks like the operation of efficiency and improving that account holder experience are the are the big winners on that particular poll. Yeah, and and that's you know that's that's kind of what you see, right? Boosting account holder acquisition, you want to gather as many members. You want to become a a not not just a single member credit union, but you want to become a household credit union. So you know, ha having those efficiencies on the back end is going to be kind of your best way to say, hey, you know, oh, you got, you know, you got your check and it posted two days after you got it, you know, mine posted the same day, you know, so of course, something like that is going to draw somebody in to say, hey, well, I want my check posted the same day, you know, so let me let me go join this credit union. That's kind of that's kind of where, where you see that kind of trickle, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, uh, and enhance your enhance your membership as well. I mean, that's 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 what you're going to see, and, and those are always are always going to go hand in hand. So that's 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 pretty much expected. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks for sharing with us, everybody on the call there, and we're going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about this and go those use cases. So we we do have that, you know hand in hand kind of you got the data, but you also want to improve that account holder experience. And that's that's really the way it down it boils down to is making sure that those um, are again hand in hand they overlap in those two strategies. So we before we do the real world, is there anything here, Gabby, that you just want to kind of again comment before we go to the next slide? Uh, no, I mean you know we we, we covered we covered most of it. Yep. Just uh, you know just making sure you know data, data hygiene is is a very critical part of. Uh, data validation as well. I mean, having, you know, having bad data with good data is not good data. Um, having good data is good data. So, you know, Opcon does have the ability to help you with uh, data hygiene as well. Uh, scrubbing, you know, bad data, let's say, you know, you don't want, you don't want stuff over 12 months old, you want to archive mm -hmm. that all that archiving can happen with Opcon as well. So, you know, you, you don't want to look at stuff that's that's been sitting there for a while. That data is no good to you. If you want to scrub that, if you want to remove that from from your from your warehouse, we can help you with that as well. Yeah, yeah. Data management is key. So that that will help improve member and customer experiences. And the four pillars here are are ones that we can kind of take away with um, with the strategies: leveraging power of orchestration. And that one you mentioned, you kind of said that single pane of glass, and and mm -hmm. that's in pulling multiple systems together, unrelated systems, bringing mm -hmm. that under that single pane of glass. Um, so we've got that. We've got taking, of course, the human error out of the equation because we know that errors cost you time and money. And sometimes we see that in the headlines that something happened, a really costly error to a, to an financial institutions so want to avoid those. Embracing a path to personalization. Of course, personalization means that you adopt a competitive advantage. And mm -hmm. so your new applications, new technologies, this kind of goes back to that, that power of orchestration. As you adopt more and take on more to create that customer experience, you may need that single pane of glass that we can offer. And then synchronize in real time. Of course, it's all about instant gratification now. You know, we talked it about is. moving away from brick and mortar, and it's making sure that everything moves close to real time as possible. So out of those pillars, um, what would you take away with those? So the the 
two big ones for me are going to be taking human error out of the equation, synchronized in real time. And the reason I say taking human error out of the equation is because I've been part of human error when it's affected a credit union. Um, you know, and I'll give you a quick story when, you know, that, that uh, little pain story from when I was in the credit union is uh, we posted a wrong batch of debit cards uh, at one point and that was manually done. And, uh, Long story short, uh, within five hours, all the fast food restaurants around our credit union had signs that they were not accepting our debit cards because they were declining. Um, so public public image was wrecked there for for a little bit. You know, uh, trust member trust was wrecked there for a little bit. So any any time that happens, I mean, there's going to be fallout. You're going your phone's going to be ringing. Your CIO is going to be on the phone. You know, saying, "Hey, what happened? I need to know. You know, how fast we can come up." And you're not able to provide any answers so you know what where where opcon really shines here it's not just that you know yes you have uh, um uh you know opcon doing this for you but actually opcon having error handling inside of it and we can build logic inside of opcon to say hey if this happens do this you know ch you know and and one big example of this is with ach i mean you know I, I don't know you know everybody on the call i don't know how many times you've had to double check to so you don't double post ACH. Well, Alcon can check that header for you, right? It, it can say, hey, you've already posted this file before. Stop what you're doing. Take a step back. Um, you know, you can check in log files. You can actually read the log files, you know, uh, use, using Opcon to say, hey, even though, you know, no human is part of is part of this process anymore, I need you to do a double and triple check. And if this does exist, I need you to take this path. So taking human error, uh, error out of the equation is part of it, but also self-healing is the bigger part here where you can, without still without human intervention, be able to self-heal. Um, and, and synchronizing in real time, like you said, Andrea, I mean, you know, instant gratification is, is, is kind of where, where our world is at and kind of where we're heading to into the future. So, uh, you know, uh, with, with Opcon, Opcon is, is great at doing batch. It's great at doing things, you know, at a scheduled point in time. Now, moving towards the future, you know, we, we are going to have some other applications that are going to kind of fill that gap between batch and, and real time. Um, and, you know, we do have another webinar that, that will talk about that as well. But think more along the lines of instant API connections. Think more along the lines of, you know, uh, field detection in a database where, we can trigger something off of a change that happens in real time. And we're not saying, hey, we want to run this at 4 p.m. Just go ahead and run it. We're saying we want to run this when this change happens and some other system sitting in a cloud or sitting in another data center or something else. So those are really going to be the two things that kind of that kind of set apart. So, you know, th think along the lines of, hey, somebody went in and changed their address. Oh, our, you know, our batch address program runs at 9 p.m. this evening. Well, it doesn't really have to moving forward. It can just be, hey, somebody changed their address here, fire off a workflow, and then change everything to where, where, where it relates to that. So, uh, um, you know, th th those are really the two things uh, here. Uh, embracing a path to personalization. I mean, with, with an automation system such as robust as Opcon, personalization is everything. Uh, um, you know, uh, the, 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 there are no limits really to what you can connect to with the connectors that we have out there and with the API connections that are being developed every single day for pretty much every application. I mean, any application that's out there, if, if it doesn't have an API, it's, it's already behind. And with our RESTful connector, with, uh, uh, our ability to tap into those, it kind of you've got limitless possibilities when it comes to API connections and integrations that you can do. So that's right. That's right. And if you want to know, uh, kind of get a sneak peek of this real time automation that uh, Gabby's kind of mentioned is we do have a, and I think Michaela probably dropped that link in later, but there is a, a past webinar. I think it was just last month that we introduced that in one of our uh, automation innovation webinars. So you can check that out, kind of get a sneak peek of that, see what we're doing as for that to enable the real time automation for our customers. And before we we go into these use cases, and Gabby's already done kind of a couple of these, but he's he's going to dive in a little bit more. Uh, again, we we just want to hear everybody's thoughts on what areas do you think could better data management drive the biggest improvement in your 
uh, account holder experience. So is that going to be mortgage, loan or or origination, payment processing, BI, document imaging, um, again, multiple choice. And you can, you can take a couple moments here. Give us your thoughts on that. Um, BI has, has just immediately taken over on the poll results here. So yeah, reporting is huge. Yep. As we get more, nothing else is registered on the board yet, except for BI and reporting. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that, that, kind of just reinforces that data is king, right? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. pe people are not asking for anything but data driven results. I mean, when mm -hmm. you when you go talk to your executives, that's what they're that's what they're asking for. So yeah. And that's numbers you know, that's, talk, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So overwhelmingly everybody is is on board with BI and reporting. So thanks for again for confirming what we what we believed all along. Um, so now we'll jump into those real world use cases. And again, we are going to lean heavily on Gabby's experience and knowledge in this. But um, that first one we kind of alluded to at the beginning, mortgage and lending, there may be loan origination file transfers, mm -hmm. there's real time interest rate updates and payment sweeps. So we've got some uh, customers that are are use, utilizing Opcon and other things for this. So kind of go ahead and, and spin off there and, and tell us about your your thoughts on this? Yeah, and and you know from from what I've seen, and I'll kind of lean in on my time in, in consulting is uh, the wow the wow factor of when uh, I would work with a uh, client that, uh, as you can see here, the quote uh, from Achieva is about FICS. Um, you know, with with FICS, it's a great example of how we can integrate another platform. I mean, for those of you that that have used FICS or that have been exposed to FICS, it's a beast, right? It's we. I mean, when when we would do implementations for FICS, we would account for it as another core conversion, right? Because you're implementing a whole new data set that's going to integrate with your core. So, you know, and, and we've been able to, with that API connection, with the connector that we've built, we've actually been able to fully automate FICS from, you know, from when a loan comes in to your balancing at the end of the day. So that that's kind of the power of, uh, of real-time automation with, uh, um, with opcon and an api connection uh real-time interest updates we have the ability now to go scrape the federal reserve website we can scrape the federal reserve website grab those rates bring them down Come, you know you want to do that at the beginning of the quarter fine you want to do that several times because i mean we all know rates are going up and down you know based on what the federal reserve wants to do you know you can go you can go and grab those you can even have those as a button where you can hit a button and then you could run that entire process without actually having to go and do that every single time and you know have heaven forbid that you know the person that typically does that for you is on vacation and you know you don't you don't have you don't have a secondary data store where you can say hey let me go pick up this procedure it can now be done with a button you click a button kicks off a workflow workflow goes out does what it needs to do sweeps those sweeps those interest rates brings them in and that's pretty simple to set up and we you know if if, if you have it set up already or if you want it set up we can help you with that as well yeah. but re really FICS FICS uh, you know if um it, I think we have a case study for FICS uh, with one of the credit unions. And uh, I if, if you are thinking about getting FICS or if you have FICS, I would go out and read that. And it's going to provide a lot of a lot of good uh, uh, information data points for you. Yeah, and we just had a, a session not too long ago, SMA connection session that does mm -hmm. go a little bit deeper into the FICS connector. And so one of our consultants here actually took us through the steps there to kind of create that. So there's there's resources out there, like you said, the case study, there's the other connection session that that did a little bit digging in deeper. So mm -hmm. definitely some, some information out there if you're interested. Um, moving on to the one that everybody is really interested in, of course, BI and reporting. So being able to do core record maintenance, and you kind of mentioned some things along the way, but you can go ahead and, and elaborate on these different things and how we're helping with this. 
Yeah, and, and really the biggest thing to lean in here is, like like we mentioned previously, is just uh, being able to operate under a single pane of glass. You know, uh, um, I don't know I don't know how many times, you know, when, when I worked uh, at the credit union, hey, I need a report from here, I need a report from the core, I need a report from RQ, you know, I need a report from SQL, I need a report from Crystal. Um, and, and, you know, when, when I was there and we finally got OpCon, three years into my tenure there, um, that became, that became second nature. I mean, to, to, to the, um, uh, business unit, right? Because instead of getting these five different tickets in, instead of getting these five different requests in, Hey, I want this report. Well, here's a button. If you want this report from here, here's a button that you can do it yourself. That speeds up their process. You know, if, if I'm not, if, if I'm indisposed or I'm not able to run that report for them today, they're having to wait on the data two, three days from now. Well, with Opcon, they're able to run the data themselves. They're able to push a button. They're able to pull the data from different data data points and do it do it themselves i mean now when 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 i was there we didn't really have rpa but now with rpa you can even scrub that data you can say hey you know i want to pull this report but i don't want column g d and e and i don't want rows 50 and below so you can actually build that into your workflow scrub that data and have it ready for your for reporting you know right as soon as it comes out so you know again the possibilities are endless uh, um with with being able to pull from all these data points but also you know i want to i want to go back and kind of talk about the synchronization from the core to all of these other data points as well and and that's that's that has value uh, in itself as well because again good data mixed with bad data is bad data. So you want good data across all of your platforms. So Opcon gives you the ability to have good data and then have that good data translated across multiple points within your organization. Yeah. This all sounds like we've got a bunch of horses just out grazing by mm -hmm. themselves, but we're putting them together and kind of creating a team and making the yep. stage coach go, you know, it's like you're really organizing things that before seemed really out of control and putting everything kind of in their place and then getting results from that is what it seems about what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I, I like that analogy. I haven't heard that one before, but I, I think I'm going to use that going forward. That's just made up, <laughs> just right spur of the moment. That's on the, the way spot. I work. On the spot. Mm -hmm. I like yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So this next one, I hear a lot of people, even even when they're outsourced, like using some sort of other, you know, their cores outsourced. A lot of of outsourced people I hear use Opcon for document imaging and storage. So yeah, go ahead and, and talk about this too. Yeah. So so uh, Nautilus being being a big one uh, uh, on base. Um, if you if you utilize on base, but also you know th think think when you think a little bit more granular. Yes, we can automate the batch uh, uh, coming out of your. Uh, um, document imaging your check imaging pretty pretty simple standard stuff that opcon can do but where i kind of want you to think here is a little bit outside the box so you know think about what happens today let's say you get a a, a, a you know credit card you, you know debit card fraud or something something of that sort uh where it's less than 50 dollars. what's your procedure there does somebody have to look at that or do you just issue that credit out because it's not worth the time for somebody to go through and look at it you know so so one use case that i've ran into and that i've actually helped um a, a client set up is you know somebody fills out a fraud form right and then they send it to the fraud department well with uh, Opcon, with OCR, and with RPA, uh, which which are all included as part of the Opcon uh, package, um, you can actually scan that document. You can say, hey, if this is over $50, I want to run this workflow. I want to send it to have eyes on it. But if this is less than $50, guess what? We're just going to issue the credit, wish it well, move on. So that's one real life scenario that you can do, you know, uh, uh, that's kind of outside of the box where it's not, you know, it's not just batching and it's not just, you know, taking that batch file and sending it to the vendor. That's pretty basic stuff, but you can kind of get into a little bit more complex stuff with, with doing, you know, fraud mitigation and, you know, making sure that your team is not spending time on things where you don't want to spending time on such as, you know, looking at, uh, at, at, 
fraud transactions that are less than fifty dollars. I don't know what the threshold is. I'm just using fifty dollars as uh, as as a threshold here that I made up. But you know, some some credit unions it may be a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, whatever it may it may be. But you can actually scan that document and say, hey, this is where this is where my threshold is. It falls below or above, and you can kick off a separate workflow to to do what you need to with it. Yeah. Yep. All good things. So the next one is um, something that's increasingly, I mean, if you don't have digital banking, you kind of, you're not with it. I mean, even my baby boomer mother uses her, her <laughs> app now to scan checks and things like that. So this is, this is the thing, digital banking. So kind of take us through this and, and how Opcon and other things help there. Yeah, so so your biggest your biggest value add here is once again going to be you know uh, uh, an API connection in the digital banking. So if you look at you know NCR, Digital Insight, uh, uh, stuff like that, uh, or Mahalo, even Mahalo Banking, I think they have an API. Again, somebody changes a address in digital banking, you can now issue that as a you know as, as a trigger, move it down your core, change that in your core without having to go grab a file from them wait for it wait for 9 p.m you know to be able to update that address or you know uh, uh, any business transactions that you need to do those are also going to be ran ran through the api i mean uh digital banking has come a, a long way like, like you said i mean if if a credit union is not using digital banking actually i have a credit union back in my hometown uh, um where they just got debit cards three years ago so i wouldn't be surprised if they uh, uh didn't have digital banking but you know uh, Op opcon is going to help you kind of orchestrate everything coming in and out of digital banking a lot of cores already have integrations with them but if they don't opcon can always fill that gap for you as well yeah and I hear I hear some of the conversations with our customers where when they do adopt something new, they immediately like Opcon's their default. How mm -hmm. can we make Opcon work for us so that other people don't have to do that manual labor? That's yep. like their go-to. Yeah, over and over again we hear that. Yeah, and we and we love that. Yeah, we love that. Let it, let us let us do the heavy lifting for you. That's that's what we're here for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last thing is risk mitigation. This is huge, of course. Mm -hmm. um, lots of things as far as risk that we have to take into consideration. So again, help us understand how Opcon is going to help us with that. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I set up at, at, again at uh, the at, during my tenure, at, you know, at the credit union was collections reports. Uh, before uh, before we had Opcon, we were running collection reports at 7 p.m. every night, seeing who became due, who became overdue, who went out for repo. After Opcon, we were running it probably 20 times a day. I mean, loans become due, loans become overdue throughout the day based on the based on the time of day. You know, you want to take action as soon as possible. Let's say you have a repo, you don't want to wait two, three, four days on that. You know, you want to you want to be able to go out and uh, you know take action immediately i mean that's that's going to help you guys with with uh, with ret you know return on investment it's going to help you mitigate losses um you know being able to run those collection reports being able to take action on accounts instantly that's kind of where 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 the value comes in um with with risk mitigation i mean uh, the the biggest value add here is going to be uh, self-service, you know, you, you, again, you don't want to be waiting on, you know, your IT department to run these reports for you. You don't want to be waiting on somebody who's, uh, uh, you know, on vacation for the week where you're not able to get those reports. All of that can be at the business unit's fingertips without having to put a ticket in, without having to, to send an email, without having to do any of that. So that's, that's where that value is going to come in as far as collection reports. We talked about trigger hold on card job. That's, you know, go, goes with the, uh, with the previous slide where, you know, you can either say, Hey, I want to, I want to issue this credit, go ahead and uh, go ahead and issue it. It's below a threshold, or I want, eyes on it because it's more than the risk that we want to take um processes and reports say say same exact thing i mean we've covered that pretty much throughout the entire presentation anytime you want to run a report if you're gathering stuff from different data points opcon is going to be your best friend it's going to add the most value just because of the single pane of glass again like like we talked about yeah i want to go back to that self-service because that that's huge i've seen some institutions only have like a couple of pages of buttons before oh, yeah. on some. And, and just to kind of expound on that is it, one of our customers says we're empowering 
our customers. And so she's IT, but her customers are the people at the credit union. She said, we're empowering them with these buttons. So yeah. um, just kind of mention again, self-service, you know, there's roles, privileges, all the things at your fingertips there for anybody. Yeah. So anything, anything that can happen in Opcon, uh, uh, you know, uh, automatically can be triggered by a self-service button. Now, those, like you said, the self-service buttons that you can have um, privileges on them, not everybody can see them, not everybody can click them, but also you can drill a little bit, a little bit further. You can actually enable them based on a condition in the environment, you know, or you can enable them only from two to three o'clock because that's the only time that that report can be ran with that has good data in it. Um, you know, but, but the, the, the one I want to hone in on is let's say, you know, you, you have a process that is running, you know, you, you don't want, you don't want somebody just clicking it whenever they feel like it, because the data is not available. We can actually set a trigger in there that says, Hey, once this process runs, turn this trigger to, you know, it's typically a zero or a one, um, turn this to a one, make that available. Now they have the ability to run that. And then after it runs, we can actually re-trigger that back to a zero. So that way, if they log in at 9 p.m. and they're like, oh, I forgot that I needed to do this today, they actually don't have the ability to do it because the preceding processes haven't ran. So yes, it, it's definitely, it definitely empowers the business units. It definitely gives power back to them, but it also saves your IT department time. It saves them the headache of having to be responsible for these things. Uh, and, and, you know, and the, and also it, it tracks all the activities. So part of data change tracking and Opcon is seeing, hey, this person logged in, they clicked this button or they didn't click this button. You know, mm -hmm. so it provides accountability as well from a data from a, a data protection perspective as well. So, you know, you want to see who ran what, when, where you have the ability to do that. And it's not it's just, you know, Steve and IT that's running all these things under his username whenever he has time. No, now everybody in, you know, I, I say Steve, I, you know, hopefully there's a Steve in IT. Um, <laughs> uh, I, we had a Steve in IT, that's I'm picking on him still. Um, <laughs> but but it, it puts the onus back on the business unit, you know, so if something wasn't ran, you know, you have accountability there, you're able to say, hey, you know, a, a, you know, uh, this is this is when it needs to be ran. This is when it doesn't need to be ran. So mm -hmm. self self service, if utilized, is is one of your greatest greatest value adds in Opcon. Uh, uh, you know what what we see is a lot of people will set up a few and then they're like, okay, we're happy with this, and then you know they're they don't want to add anymore. But you know, I, I promise you, the more you the more self service you utilize, the more you add in there, the easier your life is going to be, the easier your IT department's life is going to be. And you know, if if you don't have experience building those, take our training class or ask us for help. You know, mm -hmm. we're happy to kind of dig in, do some process mining with you guys, and say, hey, this can be a self service button. This can be you know done as a batch as as a batch workflow, or you know, we can we can even build them for you. So just let us know if if you know if you need help, and we're we're happy to step in. Yep. We actually had one of your colleagues uh, reached out the other day and said, hey, one of our customers saw a session where there were tax self-service buttons. It was mm -hmm. like for every yeah. year, you know, you walk through that tax process and there is a whole series of buttons created just for that. So, yep. I mean, we can we can take care of any kind of department issues that you may have. You just have to reach out, figure out what's what what they're doing manually and insert yourself into that with with Opcon and our other like RPA and other things. So yeah, really, really key. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, a big part of that is if, if you're in an IT department or you you've worked in an IT department and you're pretty well versed in Opcon, my, my, my advice to you, which is what I did when we first got Opcon is go sit with them. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. don't, overwhelm them with questions just go sit with them sit with them for 30 minutes while they do whatever task they need to do and just record steps go back build it for them and say hey i know you were doing it this way let me help you do it this way and it's going to save you this much time every day and you, you know the, the satisfaction in, in doing that is 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 pretty endless so you know that's that's kind of what, what i did when i was the credit union is i would just sit with them for a little bit watch them automate it ahead of time go back to them and say hey this is now automated this is what I need you to do. And yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty rewarding. 
Yeah, I think we've got even, and Mikhail can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought there was a case study out there about uh, one of our credit unions does this thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, they they do a really good job of getting everybody that can utilize a self service button. Boy, they they help set them up across the the entire institution. Oh, we absolutely. Got a comment here that somebody's looking to do buttons for their rate job edits. So yeah, yeah, we're, all the little things. We're happy to help with that. We're happy to help with that. Um, yeah. You know, that's that's something that, you know, we've done pretty consistently and we've got a pretty tried and true process and just reach out and we'll be we'll be more than happy to assist you with it. Yeah. Uh, we have come to the conclusion of all those use cases that you've been able to, to think of for those different topics. So um, <laughs> there was just a, a question or two here. And let me see, we've got um, one question that we had is how does your product handle the automation of generating and managing adverse action letters? Yeah. So uh, from my use case, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll talk about, uh, I don't know if anybody in here runs Meridian link, um, but that was pretty much uh, fully automated. Anytime a loan came due, loan came overdue, automatically generated a letter. We weren't waiting for a weekly batch. Um, you know, we would reach in, grab, grab that loan, generate the letter, send it up to our printing vendor and essentially just send it out pretty much immediately. Um, you know, we, we don't want to wait a week on overdue loans. We want them to come due sooner rather than later. And timing was everything with that. So once we, once we were able to automate that entire process it uh, you know, it, it it cut down on the overdue loans. It helped out with, uh, um, you know, our collections department, not having to do extra work. A lot of times, you know, somebody's overdue by a day, two days, something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's an oversight. So, you know, we want to get, get it to them as soon as possible so we can have that account rectified. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that seems to be, I don't think there's any other questions that have come in. So I will let Michaela take it over from here to close this out. All right. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you, Gabby. Want to share uh, just a couple of resources with you all. I've added some links in the chat to additional content related to some of the themes that we've talked through today, as well as links to some of the content that Gabby and Andrea referenced throughout the session. I've also linked several case studies, and if you'd like to see OpCon automation in action, I've added a link you can use to schedule some time to do that. If you're not already signed up for the automator, you'll see a link you can use to register for that. This is a monthly newsletter that we send out. It's a great way to keep a pulse on what's happening in the world of automation. Next, we have some upcoming sessions to put on your radar. First, we have a lunch and learn session on September 12th at 12 p.m. Central, and that will cover setting up a vision dashboard. These sessions will be held the second Tuesday of every month, and they'll span roughly 30 minutes. They'll offer some in-depth product insights from uh, SMA's experts. And on September 18th at 12 p.m. Central, we'll be hosting an SMA Connection session focused on scripts in OpCon and answering your security questions about OpCon in the cloud. So you'll see links that in the chat that you can use to register for both of those sessions as well. With that, I want to thank you all for spending this time with us. Appreciate it. And thank you to both of our presenters as well. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks.